So WrestleMania 36 was terrible. It wasn't WWE's fault. They were dealing with the pandemic in real time, and it just so happened to coincide with the banning of fans and having to do this show from the NXT Performance Center. And look, they did do the best they could, but we knew straight away this is not how wrestling was meant to be. It does mean there's loads we can talk about those. So hello, my name is Simon from What Culture. Please do hit that subscribe button. And here is 10 fascinating facts about WrestleMania 36. Number 10, it was the first two-night mania. I'm sure you remember this because it was a big talking point at the time. Should WWE embrace the idea of a weekender when it comes to the show of shows? Even without the pandemic, it felt like it was time because do not forget Mania 35 went on for about 67 hours. It was way too long and didn't help anybody. By the main event, people were actually tired because of course they were. I don't think that was the catalyst for change, but when it became obvious we couldn't run a normal event, we just threw everything at the wall, including this. As we can now see, this actually was to everybody's benefit, because yeah, we've carried this on ever since, and it does feel like mania has improved because of it. I still do live in fear that before long we get two nights at 10 hours each, but let's hope not. I have accessed my feelings. I could not handle it. Number nine, first time, last time, only time. WWE first used this tagline to advertise NFL player Lawrence Taylor competing at WrestleMania. But amazingly, it also works when we talk about Otis versus Dolph Ziggler from WrestleMania 36. I mean, that's just a crazy thing to say. The reason for this too, and I promise this is true, is that this was the first time Ziggler had a singles match at Mania. Yep. Let that sink in for a second. Of course, it was typical this would come in front of no fans, but after trying to win the affections of Mandy Rose, who was dating Otis, they all fell out and must settle this feud with slams. Sonya Deville was also involved, it actually did add to proceedings, and after the big man won and kissed his girl, well, it was actually quite the nice moment. Think of that. Amazingly, this was the end of the line for Dolph too, as he missed the next three WrestleManias due to injury and then was released in 2023. I think we can safely say WWE never treated this guy the way they should. Everything I've just said is bonkers. Number eight, Vince McMahon fought for an empty stadium. And boy, do I get that in hindsight. I think he was right. Mania 36 was meant to come live from Florida until Governor Ron DeSantis stopped all public events in March. And while that was the end for most sports, WWE thought differently they would continue. As soon as that decision was made, it was on to round two, or trying to convince the powers that be, that they should still host Mania at the Raymond James Stadium. At least then it wouldn't feel like a flippin' funeral. It was a resounding no, because what sort of message would that send out? Which is when McMahon relented, and they went to the PC. But hey, at least they did this a year later, when the weather tried to ruin that one too. What a rubbish time. Number seven, a fake main event. While you thought Brock Lesnar versus Drew McIntyre was the main event of this show, it wasn't. When the camera stopped rolling, the big show came out, told the Scottish warrior he wanted to fight him, so him and Drew went at it. I mean, it was really, really weird. This was then shown on Raw the next night, and actually it was done for a very specific reason, because WWE didn't know what to expect. Once again, the pandemic meant they were in uncharted waters, so as WrestleMania 36 had been filmed 10 days before it aired, they just recorded more content on the off chance. What if the world had forced them to shut down altogether? It's why many said this show should have been used as the first ever wrestling season finale, and then everybody could have just sat home and waited it out obviously didn't do that and ended up in the thunderdome you couldn't make it up number six it was the first ever pre-recorded mania we just spoke about this so we may as well get right in there because yeah while certain moments seen on wrestlemania shows have been taped beforehand the entirety of number 36 was done and dusted before we even got to the special day between march 21st and march 26th wwe were given special dispensation to get the show in the can but I tell you, the setup sounded horrible as you were only allowed to enter the building in small groups and outdoor shoots for the Firefly Funhouse match and the Boneyard scrap were meticulously managed. You would have thought this meant spoilers all over the place, but amazingly, I don't think we got one. Clearly everybody involved thought allowing the audience to experience it with fresh eyes was important and that's one reason the cinematic matches hit home so well. They were just so out of the box, very, very creative. Still, as I've said a lot, let us never do this again. Number five, a brand new record. Over the years, WWE has often had two world championships, which yes, is silly, especially as it was obvious which one they deemed the most important. If the WWE title main events and the world heavyweight doesn't, well, there you go. It's why we saw Sheamus boot Daniel Bryan's head off in 18 seconds, and Hulk Hogan claim victory in 22 seconds at WrestleMania 9. 
I mean, we only had one special belt then, but it was the second time it was being defended. When it comes to Mania 36, though, amazingly, both big-time championships had the shortest match running time over both nights. Yep, Braun Strowman defeating Goldberg was done in just 2 minutes and 10 seconds, whereas Lesnar was beaten by McIntyre in a swift 4 minutes and 35 seconds. It made sense with Brock and Drew, because why bother having that go longer with no fans? And given Bill vs. Braun was a last minute replacement, which we will talk about in just one second, well, you may as well just get it done. Number 4, going out on top. Everything around WrestleMania 36 also sucked underlined a lot of them but it was during this time where wwe went and released a bunch of wrestlers too that felt totally unnecessary it's not like there were any other options at the time and a total of well over 100 faces were let go across the entire company and yet only two made it onto this show carl anderson and luke gallows now there is no excuse for any of it but given that they were involved in the boneyard match with aj Styles and the undertaker which was universally praised it did mean that they left with their heads held high they helped no end to make that what it was it does have a nice ending too as they are back with the wwe these days apparently making all the cash good Every wrestler should be allowed to get that bag. Number three, Vince takes a dive. The word backstage in WWE has always been that Vince McMahon won't make you do anything he wouldn't do himself. That's why back at Mania 10, you can see him zip lining into the stadium because that was the planned entrance for Shawn Michaels. He was proving there was nothing to worry about. Fast forward 26 years and he was doing it again, this time with Rob Gronkowski. Shown in the very good 24 documentary about the event, McMahon wanted Rob to throw himself off one of the platforms in the performance center where he would crush some fools below. Unsurprisingly, when Gronk got up there, he looked down and he was a bit like, wait a minute. That's when Vince went Vince and hurled himself from the balcony as if this was the equivalent of going to the toilet. He didn't even think twice, even though at the time he was 74 years old. Sheesh. Number two, the shortest ever main event build. Roman Reigns made the best decision ever when the pandemic kicked off. He went home. As a man with serious health issues, he couldn't trust that he would be okay. So even though he was booked in the Mania main event, he went and stayed with his family and could not support this decision more. It did mean WWE needed a replacement, so they just closed their eyes. And when they opened them, they saw Braun Strowman. That'll do. I suppose it was down to the fact Goldberg was the champion, so this would be a big man fighting man meat match. But we literally set this up on the SmackDown before WrestleMania. That is not ideal. It was basically just a graphic telling us too, and amazingly, Strowman won the title. I suppose this happened because Roman was meant to. And of course, Reigns would return at that year's SummerSlam. We know the rest. Number one, the weirdest Mania debut ever. Your first appearance at any WrestleMania must be quite daunting. You're going to have more eyes on you than ever. And if it goes bad, whoops. This wasn't the same for this Mania because, yeah, it was in a warehouse. But that didn't stop WWE. From nowhere, they called up Austin Theory from NXT, put him in a random six-man tag on the 30th of March Raw when he partnered Angel Garza to lose to the Street Profits at the Show of Shows. That is so, so weird. Just to make it even more confusing, given the way the tapings were handled, Theory had actually debuted properly on Mania before Raw, even if we, the audience, saw it play out the other way around. That does also mean he kind of made his first main roster showing at WrestleMania. And now I just have to leave it here because that hurt my brain. No many other fascinating facts about WrestleMania 36? Please do leave us a comment below before you like the video, share the video, and damn it, subscribe. You can also click the video on the screen now to continue your What Culture journey. You can go to whatculture.com to read these articles with your eyes. And we're on social media at WhatCultureWWE and Simon Miller 316 Thank you so much for joining me as always. And look, I'm just going to tell you this now. Never rewatch WrestleMania 36. It's not worth it just makes you sad in your tum-tum. Goodbye.